Hi beauties, welcome to Lady Lay Tarot. In today's reading, we're going to take a look at what you should focus on in your life to be the happiest version of yourself. So these are guided messages from Spirit, and we're going to take a look at what they have to say. We have three piles with us today. The first pile is this butterfly, the yellow and the pink. The second pile is this blue and red butterfly. And the third pile is the green and pink butterfly. Please take a moment or two to reflect and see which pile or piles you feel are calling out to you. If you're not sure which one is most calling out to you, as I always like to say, you could try rolling the dice 10 times, 15 times, and seeing which of them one, two, or three comes up the most often while asking for spiritual guidance. So without further delay, let's get into it. Hi, pile one, welcome to your reading. You felt drawn to this yellow and pink butterfly. And the card that flew out as I was shuffling for this pile is enlightenment. Okay, and it is the number 19 in case that's important to you in numerology. So enlightenment is about gaining knowledge and clarity on issues you hadn't in the past. You know, they say with age comes wisdom. Well, hopefully that is the case, especially if you're reading up on things and areas of interest. For example, if it's relationships, you're reading self-help books, which help you explore that topic further. Could be about education. So. Yeah, that's a clue here before we get into further cards on what you need to do to be happier or the happiest version of yourself. Maybe you need to take up a new hobby or learn new life skills, um, read more books, especially ones that speak directly to your heart. But we're going to take a look at what other cards have to say. So I'm going to shuffle. This process will be sped up and we'll see which cards are coming through. You could skip over this process. Timestamps are in the description. Okay, pal one, your cards are ready. So we're gonna take a look at which cards came through. Okay, we have Assertion. Four of Wands. Hermit. Well, get back to the basics. Flexibility. Six of Cups. Beggar. The moon card, five of cups, three of swords, broken wishbone, which will not be granted. We have escape. Protection. Phoenix transmutation. And we have key. 
successful outcome to your problems. Wow, pile one. First off, this is really heavy here with a three of swords, broken wishbone. I can see that something has really hurt you or has been hurting you. Maybe this is a time of depression or you were like, stabbed in the back and the heart. You know, like somebody hurt you very deeply and it has caused, and caused you to withdraw. You see with the hermit to where you don't trust people. It says here, withdraw from society out of fear of negative judgment of others, refusing to help those in need. Um, and maybe others have criticized you very harshly and you feel there's something wrong with you. You've really internalized either a breakup that you've had or people bullying you. It could be either of those. And it seems like the wish that you had was not granted either with a certain person or to make certain friends, you know, those people, they just backstabbed you, I see. And we have the key card here right at the bottom, which is showing us that this is like a key theme or issue that needs to be resolved in your life, that needs to be um, transmutated as we have in the last row here with the phoenix, phoenix rising from the ashes, burning all of that complex down to the ground. Because it seems here like, you have an insecurity, you've developed a complex, you've believed these people's um, messages, even if you say to yourself that you don't, and that, you know, they were in the wrong, and that you didn't deserve this type of treatment, you withdrawing from love, from society, and becoming like hardened, actually shows that they, you did let them get to you, which, you know, is not your fault. We all go through that from time to time, but it's about building thick skin. Hopefully, how fast you can bounce back. And there's no shame in it taking a little longer than others, but it is time to do that if you want to be the happiest and most successful version of yourself. You see with the Four of Wands here, this is a card of marriage. It's making me think that this Three of Swords, this betrayal that you've experienced may have something to do with maybe your parents, or it could be like a relationship that you've had that you set your sights on and you were left confused with the moon card here. Like, why uh, didn't this work out? And it's a matter of identity. You see the cat staring at himself in the pond here. Like you've made this your identity, being a reject in this sense, in your own words, not mine, being rejected by this person or these people has become like your identity. You've internalized it so much. But spirit is advising you to fight against those negative thoughts about yourself and to not lose your hope for a happy marriage or happy union with someone or your soul tribe because the protection card here, it's saying preserve that beautiful vision that you've had for you know having this family of your dreams, having a supportive partner who is totally yours, who's totally smitten with you, by you. So remain flexible to that idea. Don't shut it down and don't withdraw just because you've had these terrible experiences with people. We're also going to get um, messages. I forgot to mention that at the start. So we're going to take out some extra messages here at the end. Yeah. So with the flexibility card here, like remain pure of heart, really believe that this will come to you, that this pure person who is totally smitten by you, who's not going to play any games, who really sees your value and will give you this family situation that you so desire, can be yours. And we have a hint here on how this can be established. It says, get back to the basics. Maybe make a list, write down with the quill here, what makes you feel valued in a relationship. Your standards of a partner. How this partner can make you feel valued. Do they support your dreams, for example? Do they let you have free time? Do they call you regularly? Do they text you every day? And make sure that the person that you're dating has those things that make you feel emotionally supported and like you're being fed uh, nutrients. I call them like um, emotional nutrients, okay? So you need to write those things down. And this type of person is not beyond your reach. Don't think of that being the case just because you've had a terrible person 
or terrible people visit slights upon you. Here with the beggar, also what I'm getting is internalized shame. You have so much shame. Look, look at this, um, these two figures of this woman grasping their face in shame and hiding out from society, even with the hermit. So you have to get rid of this discomfort that you carry around with you because you're mortified about what happened. From this imagery, it's as though the shame has taken over your body. Maybe you're even slumping, slouching, the way you, that you sit down, the way that you treat your body, the way that you dress. You know, little cues. We can pick up from those little cues that you feel ashamed about yourself. Maybe um, for some of you here, this is shame about your weight. Because I do see uh, figures here like trying to uh, swamp themselves in clothing and hiding their weight. Even this one here. So if your weight is something that you feel ashamed about, don't be. Love yourself regardless. See, it's like you, you want to escape. You don't want to see what, what it is that you feel ashamed about. But it is self-internalized shame. So it's really, really sad how you've let these nasty people affect your self-worth. And that's what you have to like free yourself of. Maybe writing down things will help you every day. And by all means, get therapy as well. Therapy is an amazing, amazing tool because you have to rid yourself of the shame. Like you've done something wrong or that nobody would love you the, the way that you are completely holy and worship the ground that you walk upon. But that's not true. So we have here also the Six of Cups, the Sicarda of Reconciliation, Childhood, etc. And with this, uh, for some of you, what I'm getting is like you're waiting for someone or people who've hurt you to come and apologize to you for you to set yourself free and to feel like you have nothing to be ashamed of. But with the transmutation right underneath it, Spirit is telling you don't wait on an apology. You don't need someone to validate your worth and you don't need someone to apologize to you for you to feel like I wasn't the problem. You know, I was not in the wrong here. You should know that instinctually. You should know that with every fiber of your being that you were not wrong and that there was nothing terrible about you or bad about you that deserved or warranted this type of horrible, humiliating behavior by this person or by certain bullies. Okay, there's nothing that you did that warranted that. And for others of you, what I'm seeing since we have this little girl here, and as I mentioned, it looks like um, for some of you, like parents' situation, maybe the way that your parents fought and, and divorced. And you keep thinking and going back, feeling ashamed about it, thinking, if my parents had been different, if I had been born to a different set of parents, if they had stayed together, et cetera, et cetera, my life would have been so different. And you have the shame about that situation, about being someone who was abandoned or coming from parents who were selfish, weird, you know, like you feel like an outcast in society. So spirit is telling you that you have to let go of all those things that you feel ashamed about, that you don't come from the right, right background, for example. Own yourself, own everything, and proudly. There's no one like you, and as you are, you deserve everything that's good in the world as you are and burn all of those self-doubts that have been eating away at you. That's what you need to do to be healthier and happier. So I want to get three cards for what else spirit is advising you to do. Like how can you, um, what steps can you take actually to get rid of this? So let's see. Okay. So we have, wow. Okay. Eight of swords, very reminiscent of the hermit here. You've trapped yourself. And the Three of Pentacles is a card of collaborating with others, working together. Uh, one of the messages I'm getting with this is, for example, if you're dealing with addiction issues, it would be really helpful to go to a support group. Or like if you're dealing with a breakup or you had a narcissist as an ex, there are support groups for that, for people who've suffered from the same things. You need to reach out collaborate or talk to people who have been through similar experiences to see how not alone you are, how common these kinds of occurrences are, unfortunately. Okay, because by isolating yourself, you convince yourself of the false narrative that not many people have the type of experiences that you've had and that there's something odd or weird about you. 
but there are a lot of odd or weird people just like you and you need to discover them instead of isolating yourself. They'll help you discover that you should be loved, flaws and all. And let me get another clarifier for three of pentacles here. Let's see what else spirit is saying would be extra helpful here. So support groups, some of you may join like a team, um, like sporting activity where you collaborate with a team. Wow, okay, friendship, it couldn't be clearer than that. Make some really good friends. Um, like some people like to join martial arts because that's where they can make friends who are similar minded. And we have impulsiveness, yeah, Aries energy here. So this could be a sporty activity, for example, that's what I'm seeing. <laughs> for some of you, it may even be horse riding, like horses are said to be very therapeutic, especially if you have PTSD, there is some sort of um, therapy for PTSD with horses, especially in California. So you may want to check into that or to do some sort of like boxing. Um, they have these rooms also where you destroy things to uh, let out let out pent up anger. I forgot what that's called. Comment if you know what that's called. Like you take an axe and you just destroy an old room and yeah, you pay some money to do that, to demolish a room and to like get rid of your pent up anger. So that's what I'm seeing with this and other people seeing that there are other people who've gone through very similar experiences as you and having their support, their ear, and being of support to them also will help you get out of this and make you the happiest version of yourself. So let me see anything else. Does Spirit have any other messages for you? Let me see. Let's get two from this deck and two from another. Okay. What we when we know better, we do better. Absolutely. Okay. So yeah, like you're blaming yourself. You're ashamed so much about what you could have done better. Like I screwed this up. I made a fool of myself. That's why these people treated me this way. Stop the self-blame. When we know better, we do better. And those people that you think are so high up, so perfect, they've also effed up. If you think you've effed up, they've effed up just as bad as you, if not worse, in other situations. You just haven't seen them through a microscopic lens. And they're nasty to bring it up to you that you did this. You would be too kind to mention or to demean someone for not being perfect all of the time. So why would you tolerate that kind of behavior from such people? You can't have like double standards and these people have double standards, right? They're treating you bad, but expecting kindness and the best possible treatment in return. That's bullshit. And we also have, why isn't love enough? Okay. Yeah. This is a quote from uh, the movie Closer. Yeah, sometimes love is a cheap word thrown out there. Yeah, I encourage you to watch it if you want to. It's about a love, um, not triangle, but love square. So why isn't love enough? It's a very poignant line said by uh, Natalie Portman's character in the movie. And it's a million dollar question. Why isn't love enough? If you have any ideas, please do comment down below. But yeah, fact of the matter is love is not enough, not coming from the wrong people anyway. If a person has really good intentions, is innocent and is trying to be helpful, is just trying to be loving, love is enough. But if there are ulterior motives in a person's actions, if there are material things that they want to get by offering love, then love obviously is not enough is one of the interpretations that we can understand from this. So love is enough if it's coming from a loving, purely loving source. And there are such people out there, though they're rare. So let me get another one. There are other ones here as well. Let me get one more from here. Be water, my friend. Okay. So just flow. Trust in the process and, you know, Time does heal all wounds when you do the work. Also, don't try to be something that you're not. Um, by that, I mean, if you think that you have to be more badass or something to get people to love and respect you, you're mistaken. You just need to be genuine, but working on yourself every day. People will love you for it and they should love you for it. Have some self-respect, have some self-pride, please. And we have no time to hate, right? 
and this is mostly for yourself. So you have no time to waste hating yourself, being bad to yourself, obsessing over your flaws. What you have time for is to love yourself, to develop yourself, to have the happiness that has been eluding you. So no time to hate. Be, a, be water. Just flow. Don't resist the growth and what life is trying to teach you, but do love yourself radically, flaws and all, and expect to be loved in return. So how one, these are some of the messages that Spirit wanted to share with you about how you can be the happiest or happier version of yourself. God bless you. I hope that you have a wonderful day. Always cherish yourself. Truly, truly love yourself. Flaws and all. I hope to see you at a later reading. Bye. Have a nice day. Hi, beauty. Welcome to your reading. You felt drawn to the blue and red butterfly. And the card that flew out for your pile is freedom. Wow, beautiful. And the number here is 13, which reduces to a four. That may be your life path number. Go check that out, what that means. So four also reminds me of the card of cancer, family home. And here with the freedom, one of the clues that I'm getting about what spirit is telling you would make you happier is getting out there, traveling, exploring new uh, terrain, new people, maybe even going hiking, going to the mountains pursuing time alone. So uh, maybe if you're more of the type of person who hangs around others or um, you're used to being being in a partnership like you don't like to be alone, Spirit is saying that you need to be okay with being alone and um, like exploring yourself, learning more about yourself, uh, traveling, seeing different cultures, trying different foods. Yeah, that's one of the clues that we're getting with that card. It's like a Sagittarius or Aquarius uh, type of card, an air energy. So we're going to see which cards are coming out from different decks. This process will be sped up and we'll see what messages are coming through from Spirit about what you need to do to be happier. Plus, we're also going to get some messages, extra messages at the end of this reading about what would make you the happiest version of yourself. So let's get into it. Okay, pile two, your cards are ready. So let's take a look at what messages are coming through from Spirit. Let's see. We have the King of Swords. Queen of Wands. Chaos. Three of Cups. Centricity, Tulip, Great Passion, Eight of Cups, Lust, Gavel, Transmutation, Six of uh, Wands, Ooh, okay, Prostitute, Birth, okay, let's see, we have the Knight of Wands, Younger Woman, Vampire, 
interesting. Let me get one more here. Thank you, Spirit. Key. Okay. Wow, pile two. <laughs> this is quite quite the reading here. We have a lot of passion here. Look at this, the volcano, the transmutation, the fire, the great passion, Queen of Wands with her badass fire energy. Even this King of Swords looks fiery. So yeah, I see a lot of fire here and the spirit is encouraging you to take charge of that fire energy. Yeah, even the chaos here. So I'm not seeing you being encouraged here by spirit to be like someone who's shy or censoring themselves here. Spirit is telling you to speak the truth, be bold, stop trying to diminish your light to make yourself more likable and live in your truth with the King of Swords. King of Swords is someone who is very well-spoken, very eloquent. Yeah, so I'm seeing here that if you have like any resentments, you might not want to say every single resentment that you have, but if you've been holding back, you see how we have the freedom card here as our main card. You've been holding, sorry. So if you've been holding back and trying to censor yourself, not say the wrong thing because you don't want to come off as difficult, Spirit is saying here, F it. You know, who, who gives a crap if you come off like difficult? The important thing is to not make yourself sick because you're afraid of admitting the truth. I'm pushing down what you want to say, what you really feel about certain situations, because that will make you sick. Okay. So if, for example, you can't say what is on your mind, every little thing, then you have to find an outlet where you can say that. It could be through journaling. It could be through making a video of yourself ranting and uh, rewatching it. Like some people do that actually. Instead of journaling, uh, I myself used to do this um, in the past. I would just make a video of myself ranting, save it as a private video for myself in another YouTube page, and then you could rewatch it. And it feels good getting that anxiety verbalized, you know, just so you could vent. Because you don't want to uh, wind up venting to the wrong person who's going to be callous and judgmental. Yeah, so spirit really likes your passion. And if you don't have this passion, if you've been pushing it down, pushing it down, Spirit is saying, don't do that. You need to get it out there because this stuff will make you sick if you push it down. Don't be afraid of your shadow side. Maybe you've had too much light and that's what this is about. You have to unchain yourself since the theme of Pile Two's reading is about freedom. Freedom of expression, freedom of movement. Caring less about how others receive you. Even here, gavel. Like maybe you've been holding back on um, like judgments about people like, oh, you know, maybe he didn't mean to do that. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Your shadow side is telling you he damn well did mean to say that. He damn well did mean to hurt me by doing that. Yes, he did. And face the truth. Stop trying to be so nice. That's what this is saying here. Spirit is saying that that will make you a happier person. When you vent that, when you acknowledge it to yourself, especially. Here, what I'm saying for some strange reason, um, if you know this uh, rapper, Megan the Stallion, <laughs> with this picture, I'm, I'm seeing like one of her music videos um, coming to my mind's eye here. Um, and I think the name of the video was uh, Plan B. So you may want to check that out. It's, it's a really good anthem. It's a really good song. I like it and it's very empowering. So you have to empower yourself and embraces freedom so dress how you like is one of the things that i'm seeing here embrace your desire for maybe the sensual the material things maybe you've wanted to keep yourself humble and you feel ashamed that you want the material things that you want but pursue them and do believe that you deserve them because you absolutely do life is for pleasure as well don't push those needs and desires of yours down because you don't want to um, appear greedy or you think that others may like misconstrue what you're all about. You're afraid of being judged for being superficial or too decadent. 
but people's perceptions shouldn't matter. You gotta live how you see fit and boldly own your choices. As long as you're being respectful while expressing your truth, you should be expressing your truth more on a daily basis. See here with the Eight of Cups, having the power, the courage to walk away from what no longer serves you. This is like a boy by energy here that I'm seeing. One of the ways that we can interpret this card. And you see, it's like she took one of the cups and the rest are like, well, I don't need the rest. So um, I'm going to go about my business and I'm not going to face those that I don't need. Okay, so maybe your people pleasing tendencies um, have been like overactive. And this is why spirit is like urging you to be more fiery here, more truthful rather than polite and quiet. Even with the lust card here, um, it's really interesting. I just noticed that with the lust and the prostitute card. Maybe you have to express your sexual side more. Um, maybe like you're too covered up. Um, I don't mean simply in the sense of dress sense, um, but it could also mean that, but also that you have some sexual hangups, like you don't feel comfortable out your, about your body or um, like people pleasing you in that sense. And spirit is telling you why do you feel that way? Maybe you need some professional help to get down to the bottom of that and learn to love your body, lose your inhibitions, you know, like explore your sexuality here and to really appreciate being like, taken care of by the person that you're in a romantic relationship with. Like, why are the, you the one that's giving pleasure? You need pleasure too. And maybe you need to take time to discover that pleasure or to allow your partner to give you that pleasure. So that's what I'm seeing here with these two cards. Self-denial. Yeah, with eccentricity, this is the Aquarius card. And even this card over here, the Six of Wands, about celebration and success. You see how all of these people are applauding um, this lady here? Yeah, it's like celebrate being the center of attention and let people praise you and give you things. Now we have, again, another passionate card, the Knight of Wands, very passionate, very fiery. And, and again, we have the Tulip, the Great Passion card here. So um, again, I'm seeing that fiery energy. Maybe in your younger years, uh, you were more prone to like censoring yourself or you were that way when you were younger, but then as you grew older, you started to censor yourself. But um, Spirit is telling you to get back to that sort of space where you're unapologetic and laugh more easily. Yeah, so you see, like, go back to your former self here from when you were younger. They say that's usually the most authentic version of ourselves, how we were when we were like seven or six years old. So ask your parents maybe if, if you don't know what you were like then. Were you um, like more shy then or were you more like blunt and extroverted and outgoing? So if you were more outgoing, extroverted, but now you've mellowed down because of things that have happened in your life or because you feel like you had to do that to be able to protect yourself and adhere to society's rules. But spirit is telling you, be more like you were when you were like seven and eight before you had to put on these um, social masks that you've had to develop. At least be like that in your personal life if you can't be in your business life. But here, if you, you're in a business where you have to be very conservative and not allowed to express your opinion, this may be a call to change your career and to do something that is that brings you more passion, makes you feel more, feel more alive here. Yeah, that could also be the case. It's interesting we have the chaos card here. I'm going to get a clarifier for that before we move on there. So with this chaos card here, please, Spirit, let me get the card out. Can you show us with this uh, Queen of Wands and chaos? What else it's trying to say there? Thank you. Ooh, defense. Okay. All right, and one more from here. Yeah, we're getting that sword energy, King of Swords energy again. Yeah, like, <laughs> hell hath no fury, like a woman scorned kind of energy that I'm getting here. Like, if someone is being rude to you, don't hide, clap back, is what I'm saying. But you don't have to do it in a nasty way with curse words or whatnot. But it's saying that you should address that in the heat of the moment and not just, like, try to push it down you see with here with the four of cups there's a lot of thinking going on here like should i do that or should i do it this way maybe you double guess triple guess before you react right but with these cards here oddly enough what i'm seeing is that you should be more natural more spontaneous more you 
Yeah, but there is a respectful way of going about it, even though you're completely honest. So that is what spirit is urging you to do here so that you could have a healthy body, mind, spirit, and not get sick and to be the happiest version of yourself. So if you've been passive aggressive with people, that's what I'm seeing with the defense card here or overly nice with the Taurus. Spirit is saying, let go of that inhibition. Like, oh, I have to be super nice. I have to get along with these people. You know what? If they're going to start chaos, they better be ready because you're starting that too. So they better watch out. If they're going to start gossiping about you, singling you out, you're going to have an attitude problem with them too. That's what I'm seeing here. And, and you should. You shouldn't try to win them over or something because that is like doing more psychological damage to you. And it's not your job to win them over. Just because they're displeased with something or critical doesn't mean that they have valid points. You know, that's what some people get wrong. Like someone is nasty and you try to like win that person over. And the nasty person just thinks usually in most cases thinks like, oh, see, I'm like better than them. That's why they're trying to be extra nice to me to get me to like them. But if you just ignore them or if you leave them or if you just call them out on their shit without trying to be uh, nice to make them see that you're actually a nice person, they were wrong about you, they would actually get the hint that, you know, you're not that special and you don't have a right to judge me and talk to me in this way. I don't have to prove my worth to you. Right, so that's what I'm seeing with that. Even here with the vampire, I see like this passive aggressive energy here that maybe you've been hush hush censoring yourself. It says makes you aware that someone or something is draining your life force. Maybe people at work or um, people in your family, for example. It says de uh, depending on others for your psychic survival. Right, chronic complaining and codependency. Yeah, I kind of saw that codependency here when we got this as our main card here with the freedom. So if you have any codependency issues, uh, Spirit is telling you to fix those issues by learning to love being alone, your alone time here, maybe through traveling or getting to know people from different cultures, like making friends from people of different nations, because we have the eccentricity Aquarius card here and we have the overseas. So like embrace your quirky side is also another message that I'm seeing. And this is key. So this is like a particularly poignant and, and special message here. Um, with the three of cups like find your tribe you have the friends here more celebration more time out with the girls that's one of the things i'm seeing but i'm going to get another clarifier for this three of cups there can we get one more card please spirit for the three of cups oh okay innovation again we get the aquarius card yeah find your soul tribe the ones who are just weird as you or who appreciate your unique uh, weird sides here and we have the manipulation, the Scorpio card. Mm. Interesting. We got that with the vampire too. Okay. So another, yeah, definitely another message, is, a message I'm seeing here is that um, maybe you have this guilt over being like coming across as being uh, manipulative. If you do something for your benefit, like if you stay quiet for your benefit or if you ask something of someone for your benefit, right? draining your life force like you being quiet because you don't want to rock the boat seem needy or hurt your chances of something and maybe you feel like this inherent guilt for doing that like oh you know i'm not being truthful it's saying embrace that part of yourself too that's actually a good thing to have uh, some self-preservation skills trust me if the shoe were on the other foot that person would do the same as you and maybe even five times worse, 10 times worse. You have to really value yourself above maybe your coworkers or people who are treating you bad. So if you know that maybe you could tell them something that would like improve them or give them a wake up call, but uh, that person might be upset at you for a long time and that might hurt, for example, your job or something like that, do always what would benefit you, not that other person. Like, Don't try to be generous to people who are going to hurt you even if it's for like a few months because you're trying to do something for their greater good. So it's saying be a little more selfish, definitely here. That's what I'm seeing here with these cards. Maybe you're overly generous because you've grown up with that idea from your parents, like always pay it forward or be nice to people. 
and um, expect nothing kind in return. Actually, I would say for you here, Spirit is saying that's not very good advice at the time of your life that you're in right now. You should actually practice being more selfish, not just more selfish in pursuing things that are going to make you feel good. Like, uh, for example, it could be that you should take center stage here and um, do some sort of performance if you wanted to get into acting, for example, or um, like singing. Do that too, by all means. Or, yeah, like writing a book, innovation. But it's also saying here that if you've been encouraged to first think of others, and if you feel like thinking of yourself first, putting yourself first is wrong, that is bullshit. That is not wrong at all. And in fact, because you've swung so far to the left of like being a do-gooder, you need to swing more to the right so that you could achieve a balance. Okay, so that's what that is saying there. But let's see any other messages that are coming through. Let's get two from this. Okay, we have, we struggle because we compare our lives to everyone else's highlight reel. Damn, that is so true. So maybe on Instagram, you see people flossing and you're like, wow, why can't I have that body or that life? And um, yeah, that's because they've posted their best shots. They've uh, airbrushed that. So don't compare yourself to them. Do what is authentically you, what will authentically make you feel happy. And don't live for Instagram reels either. That's another very clear message I'm getting here. Anger is a cloak for grief. Wow, okay. So yeah, um, being truthful doesn't necessarily mean that you have to come out and scream it. There is a way to do it in a respectful manner um, and also in a very assertive manner. So anger is a cloak for grief. So uh, the voice doesn't have to be loud. You just have to be in control of your voice and choose wisely what words are allowed or not allowed in this situation. So don't misinterpret the passion with like raising your voice or having an extra attitude. But it's more about hitting the bullseye and um, saying clearly what exactly it is that you mean or how you felt in that situation, expressing yourself expressing your a pure passion, laughing purely from the heart. Okay, so let me see. Um, two more cards here. From this other deck, love shouldn't hurt. And don't hate the player, hate the game. Mm. Right, chaos. Right, so if in romantic relationships someone's been playing you, play right back. Play right back. If they're ignoring you, you ignore them right back. Don't hate the player, hate the game. Turn the tables on that person. Because you don't deserve that. Half-ass love. And love should not hurt. Hell yes. Love should not hurt. Love it ha has to be given for free, especially if you've treated this person nicely, if you've given them your time, your respect, your patience. Love shouldn't hurt. So if like you're having uh, difficulties in love relationships here with the chaos. Maybe that's what this is about. Like, why am I not getting the love that I want? That, that's what the Four of Cups could be referring to. Do re remember that love should not hurt. Love should add to your life. And if someone is giving you mixed messages, cut that person off. Address it. Be confrontational, but in a respectful way. Remember, anger is a cloak for grief. You could do it in an assertive way rather than an angry, loud way. And don't hate the player, hate the game. So if you know that this is a dating game and if someone's going to play this game with you, then you play it right back until you find, find that authentic person who's not playing too many games. Okay. So those are the messages that we got piled to. I hope that this was helpful to you. Please do take care of yourself. Cherish yourself. I'll see you in another reading. Bye, pile two. Have a lovely day. Hi, pal three, welcome to your reading. You felt drawn to this green and uh, pink butterfly card that flew out, generosity. Okay, so generosity, we have the maple spirit here. You know, maples are actually very strong trees. They're known for their longevity. Their branches don't break off easily in the wind. They're resilient. 
And with this, with this generosity of one of the downloads that I'm getting for what spirit is telling you uh, would help you be the happiest version of yourself is maybe spending time out in nature with the tree imagery and the nature imagery here. Also being of service to those that deserve your help. You know, we have the figures here. Let me see what that is. Oh, we have, uh, by the way, two, three, which reduces to five, a uh, card of action. That may be your birth life path number, for example. So you may want to check that out. And um, that's about like independence uh, with the generosity. I do see a lone tree here as well. So maybe even if you are a loner, there's a way for you to give back to society. And uh, by giving to those who are in need of help, maybe of the very thing that you need the most. Like, let's say someone is um, like you're going through a breakup, right? And it's really hard as hell. But um, if you're counseling someone else who's in that same position and you're giving them advice that helped you, even though you're not completely um, over it, for example, that is an act of generosity and it may actually help you, uh, believe it or not, to like expedite your healing process. So that's what I'm seeing here with the generosity card. Like give uh, what you need the most to someone who's deserving of it. And uh, this process of helping them will in turn help you right back. Even if you don't want to, like, even if you want to be solitary and alone in your pain. That's what I'm seeing with that. But let's see what other cards are coming through. So we're going to um, see which cards are coming through, what messages uh, Spirit wants to relay to you about what would make you the happiest or happier version of yourself. This process will be sped up. And timestamps are in the description if you want to skip over this part and go straight into the messages. And also... We're going to take a look at any extra cards that come out uh, at the end of this reading. What other messages Spirit wants to relay to you. All right, let's get right into it. Okay, pile three, your cards are ready. So let's take a look at what spirit wants to share with you. Okay, we have practicality, devotion, hedonist, 10 of wands, eight of wands, Excitement, horse, short journey, nine of wands, okay, knight of swords. We have the Hermit, the Ten of Cups, Status, Knowledge, the Judgment, Dark Woman, Okay, freedom. Clown. Ladder. Climbing towards success. Oh, 
Okay, pile three. First off, let's start with a short journey here. So one of the first things I'm seeing for some of you is that like you've pursued things that have a short-term payoff instead of a long-term benefit. Yeah, and that has left you wanting for more. I see you unfulfilled here and tired of the struggle. You see here with the nine of wands. So it could refer to people or to hobbies, like you've explored certain things, but you've only scratched the surface. Maybe it got too tedious, right? It was just like too much hard work here, you see, with the nine of wands. Or could, this could be referring to like you having some dead-end jobs or things that are very repetitive and boring. But see here, it's with the short journey. Like you're thinking of the short term, like financially. What am I going to get out of this? Okay, I'm going to get money to live um, from month to month. But you feel like you're not really living. You're not really thriving. And that's one of the reasons why you're not as happy as you can be. See, with the Ten of Wands, it's like a card of defeat and feeling like you run to the ground with the daily tasks that you have to do. Yeah, you're doing these practical things. You're making sure there's enough rent. Um, you have clothes on your back, etc. But you're not, you haven't been really pursuing your passion or really going for things that will last, that permanence, even maybe in terms of people that you're dating. You're, like you're not dating for long-term value. Like this, is this person going to be a good term, a good long-term bet? So we have the knowledge card here which is number one, Aries. Okay. And this is about taking charge and having more independence. You see here with the Ten of Cups and we have the Ten of Wands, card of defeat, feeling like you're not getting anywhere. Maybe this is also referring to your love life, like it's been stale, boring, or lacking, and you're not getting the situation that you want. Maybe it is a baby that you want or um, a life partner, but you're not getting that full experience, full joy, fulfillment, abundance. It can also be referring to like vacations here as well. Like you're not taking enough of those. You're not really enjoying your life moment to moment. You're just trying to survive basically. That's the survivalist energy that I'm getting here. So the answer to this according to spirit is by devoting yourself to like learning more about a trade that you're passionate about with the Knight of Swords. That is a card of intellect, bravery, being action-oriented. This is Hang Tua, the Malaysian uh, legend. He's an intelligent soldier, unafraid of leaping into battle and employing unconventional techniques to win. Rebellious, loyal, a fierce champion. So that is the key here with the crown. Honor and respect will come to you. Um, so here we have the freedom. That is going to be the game changer here in your life. You may be going back to school, for some of you here, with the knowledge, like getting that degree so you could finally start a business and do something which, will, which would bring you a legacy rather than thinking of these short-term uh, profits here. Or it could be that like you're going to learn a new trade, one that fills you with more pride and like more long-term benefits, happiness, and status. Okay. So we have like the reinvention card here, the Phoenix uh, card, the um, Eight of Wands. So that's quick action. And we have two cards of quick action, quick movement. Yeah, like I see you've been in a slump here and you just keep uh, doing the same old, same old and not getting much different results. Like you feel your soul nutrients are lacking. Your joie de vivre, your, as they say in French, um, not that I speak French fluently or anything, but uh, joie de vivre is like your force for life or your joy, life joy, life's joy is missing. So maybe uh, you haven't taken a career seriously enough. You're just trying to make ends meet. And spirit is urging you here to finally like take a permanent decision with regards to your career, something that brings you excitement. So we have the excitement card here. Uh, could be a, a public speaking type of career or um, we have the Gemini. So yeah, that's what makes me think of that. Like a call to action. Communication. You inspiring others. You inspiring yourself uh, with the status card. So I'm going to get some clarifiers for what this could be. So can we get a card for the Eight of uh, Wands and the Excitement card here? 
Okay, so we have the seven of pentacles. It's saying like invest, start now, start small, and just make sure that you follow through. It may not be overnight, right? But don't think of the short term like, okay, I just need to make sure that I have enough money for when I'm old so that like by the time I retire, I'm okay. So it's saying maybe while you're doing that boring job, invest in other things, in another skill. Um, go back to school here with the knowledge and the knight of swords here. That's also a card of intellect, as we said. And devote yourself to that study. That's going to pay off later. So branch out may not come overnight, but you have to start slowly investing in it. You see with the Six of Pentacles, it's also a card of investment. It looks like you should find a mentor who's in the type of field that you want. Also, another message for some of you is to accept help from your family, uh, funding-wise, if you want to go back to school. And you see we have the student card here as well, so it's definitely something about like going back to study something. Uh, may not be four years. It could be like a CPA course, for example, or um, real estate license. You know, it's going to resonate differently for everyone. But there's something here that would actually bring your life a lot of excitement and like a good career for you climbing towards success that would bring you status and most of all excitement and reinvention of yourself to where you feel you can really enjoy life and you could have funner experiences, better material things, and also thrive. Because it seems like whatever you're doing now, it's just really tiring you out. See here with the dark woman and nine of wands, like you're really tired, tired of the same old, same old, the rigmarole. And the reason for that is because you're lacking in the energy and the passion for what you're doing now and you're just thinking of short-term gains rather than the long-term picture. So you have to focus on the broad uh, long-term picture here if you want to be happier. You have to start investing in this future now. Even in terms of partners, go for someone whose effort towards you is really consistent and it's obvious that they really like you. Date people who you feel would be a good long-term fit with you, not someone who's dramatic, who's going to be hot and cold with you and threaten your livelihood. Someone who is going to spoil you. That's what I'm seeing here with the heat in it. Someone who's going to pamper you, spoil you. It says pursues pleasure okay, and inspires creative energy to embrace the good things in life. Celebrate the beauty in yourself. Absolutely. So you have to start doing things that make you feel good about yourself. If you've been neglecting your looks or the way you dress, as it seems uh, here with the nine of wands this may be a good harbinger for that as well like really do try to make an effort with your appearance even if you're not feeling well that would get you out of the slump if you're still forced to work at the place that you're working in currently but uh, do work towards that creative endeavor find a hobby that you can transition into a career a fully fledged career and that's what's going to be your crown and glory here that's what i see with the nine of swords you know, like reinvent yourself it's interesting also that we have these um, birds. Yeah, like this freedom, the eight of wands. The time to move is now. That's what I'm seeing with these. And to be financially independent. That's, that should be a main goal and concern of yours. Like to have enough savings to do the things that you really enjoy, to go on these types of vacations that you really enjoy. So you have to start planning now on what type of job or what type of passionate um, project course you could take which would help you in that endeavor so that you could have this fun lifestyle you could afford these types of vacations or like the type of house that you really want or the type of like money you could have so that you could pursue any side projects that you're passionate about yeah so that's what i'm seeing here excitement so going from this energy of like feeling zapped and not like much is going on here with the hermit into one where you're excited about life, where you're working towards something, even if it's uh, working hard for the first year or so or for the first uh, four years or so. But you're passionate about it and you know that something beautiful is going to come out of it. At the end, you're going to get this um, life that you wanted. So let's see any other further messages that Spirit is um, trying to relate to you on what would make you happy happier 
Let's see. Ooh, okay, three. Uh, declutter. Okay, so declutter your life. That could also be what is um, like hurting you psychologically is that like maybe you have too many things to that go on or you check your messages at night when you're supposed to like declutter your mind at that time. You're supposed to have a clear delineation of work time and alone time, but you've been kind of like doing too much in your personal time when you're home, like you're working from home or checking emails when you're home. You should stop that and also clean your house, maybe decorate. That would make you happier. And we have, I would explain, but you're not there. Okay. So we have the 10 of wands here. So maybe a breakup that you had where you were devoted to someone and there are things that are left unsaid, but this person is not there. So I want to see what uh, spirit is saying regarding that. I get another. Okay, so one of the downloads I'm getting is like spirit is telling you, okay, this person is not there. Their actions speak loud and clear and we have enterprise. Okay. So interesting that we have, we had the one here and we have the one again, this card of enterprise. It could be your life path number, for example. The one or the five could be your life path number. So with the enterprise card here, what I'm seeing is like this was fated to happen. If you're not with a certain person and that hurts you, that made you feel defeated and like sucked the joy out of your life, that person was not meant for you, you see? I can see that something heavy um, has transpired here. This person is not there, and that's all the clue that you need, that this person is not the one, right? They're not there. If they were there, they wouldn't show up in the way that you need them to show up. Because you need someone who's going to be supportive, who's going to provide you with the constant good loving. You'd get that emotional fulfillment that you need. And if this person is hasn't stepped up to the plate, and they're you know, ghost, that, you know, actions speak louder than words sometimes. And that's what that's saying there. Stop making excuses for why they couldn't be honest with you. Their actions already told you what you need to know about them. Choose to shine. Wow. Okay. And that is uh, close to the Six of Pentacles. Don't dim your light because of like how you feel about yourself right now. Just think of the future and think that you still deserve to feel good about yourself, even if you don't feel the best you, even if like your wardrobe is out of whack or your weight is out of whack, choose to shine. Whatever the circumstance, wherever you are in your life, even if you're like, let's say five or 10 pounds overweight, okay, you don't have to slim down to dress well or to look your best or to smile or to feel your best. You are perfect as you are right now and choose to shine with whatever you have working for you right now. That's what I'm seeing with that card. But let me see any other message that is coming through here. One more. Okay. Nothing in life is for certain except death and taxes. Okay. So this is kind of reminding me of work here. Um, for some reason, like that's what I'm seeing for many of you. Like work has been something that has been tiring you out recently. Like you've lost your passion or you never had it in the first place. Yeah. Death is inevitable, taxes, okay, we know you got to pay your bills, but while you do that, you have to do something that is enjoyable, that's going to bring you this excitement, this passion, that's not going to feel like every day is mundane, and you have to start ASAP, uh, taking courses or doing things that are going to bring you to that type of career that would actually make you happy, because you're, you'll be spending a lot of your day at work, so you have to make sure that you're doing something that is going to be fulfilling and enjoyable where you feel useful. So money is not the only contributing factor. And money is not the only thing that you should be thinking about here. You need to do the kind of work that's going to put a spring to your step. That's really going to fulfill you. Life is really short, um, is what this is reminding me of here. Nothing in life is for certain. And don't think that, you know, I'm too old for this. It's too late for me. It's never too late to change direction. You could always start small. And within a couple of years, you'll have reached, you'll have reached some sort of competency to the point where you can have some skills to do the type of job that you really want to do that would change and turn your life around. So pile three, these were the messages that Spirit wanted to share with you about what you can do 
to feel the happiest you. I hope that this was helpful and uh, please take care of yourself, cherish yourself. I'll see you in another reading. Bye. Take care, pile three.